I was kept up. Oh, there's been some sickness. There's been some, some sadness. There's been some struggle. But in the midst of it all, God has kept us. So right where you are on this Pentecost Sunday, I don't know what God has done for you on last week. But this is first Sunday. And we don't know what tomorrow is going to hold. But what we got right now, while we're here, we might as well go ahead on and worship. We might as well go ahead on and pray. Every head bowed, every head bowed. Every head bowed. God, we give you praise and thanksgiving for just allowing us the privilege to come into your house on this another Pentecost Sunday. It was there at Pentecost when Peter, who denied you, was filled. When Nathaniel and Bartholomew, Andrew, left you. It was there when all of those in that room had done one thing or another to disappoint you, but yet they were all gathered on one accord. And because they were on one accord, the promise that you gave manifested. And Lord, I thank you that you've allowed some individuals just like them to gather in a familiar place. But let us not become so familiar with this place that we miss the move of what you're going to do in this place. So God, we come today submitting ourselves completely to whatever you want to do. Have your way in this place. We know that the Spirit of God lives in us and so we brought you with us today. And as we are together, gathered in this sacred spot. Oh God, heal, deliver, transform like never before. So when we leave this place, others will see us this afternoon and know that we have been with you. We've been in your presence. So Lord, whatever it is, forgive us, cleanse us. We're open to allow your spirit have your way in our lives. We thank you. We bless you. And we give you glory. It is in your name that we pray. Let every heart say amen. amen. Now come on, give God a praise like you know he heard the prayer. Come on, come on, come on, son. He's worthy of a praise. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Us as you may allow them on the outside to do that. Hallelujah. Praise his holy name. God bless you. We thank God for you being with us today. To those that are watching us by way of virtual church, we greet you with Jesus' joy on today. I'm humbled and honored to be standing in this sacred spot and sharing with you wherever you are today. And I pray that this worship experience will cause you never to be the same again. To all of you that are here, I don't see any visitors today, but if there are any visitors today, amen. I know that you may be visiting your first time here, but we don't consider you a visitor when you know Jesus Christ. All we can say is, hey, cuz, what's happening? We thank God for you. And we greet you with Jesus' joy. You are our VIPs today. And we don't take it for granted that you are worshiping with us here today. So on behalf of myself, my wife, my children, the ministerial staff, the deacon, deaconess ministry, and the whole household of faith here at the Masculine Missionary Baptist Church, we greet you this morning with love and Jesus' joy. Come on, Macedonia, let's greet our visitors. Amen. I do want to give a few observations and we shall continue to worship us. You may allow them to enter. Amen. As they're coming through. Amen. God bless you. God bless your heart. 
Come on in for the table is spread. Amen. And the feast of the Lord is going on. Yes, yes, <laughs> Amen. I'm so glad that God gave us a place where we can come and worship. Amen. Come and worship. Don't let anything distract you. Don't let the devil detour you. Because nobody knows like you know what God has done for you. Thank God for all of you that attended Sunday school this morning. I pray that you were blessed this morning. Amen. On next Sunday morning, next Sunday morning during our Sunday school time, we will be having a special presentation. We'll be having a suicide seminar. So I'm asking, of course, that our Sunday school be suspended. Everyone will be here in the sanctuary to hear this very informative information regarding suicide. And I thank God for the presenter that's going to come. And I pray again that we will be here, be in attendance, in full attendance. Because in the African-American community, we are being ravaged by suicide. Amen, somebody. Amen, Amen somebody. Amen. That's something, of course, in our culture that you didn't really hear much about. But mental illness is real. I need somebody to talk back to me. And there are people who attend church every week but struggle with depression. And they struggle with loneliness. And they struggle with their self-esteem. And even with worthlessness. Amen, somebody. And so again, we need to come and hear in this uh, segment. It's going to be on next week. This information, and I pray that you will come and be there. Scripture is still true. We are destroyed because of a lack of knowledge. Amen. And so, if you have any questions regarding this, please see Deaconess Jackie Woody, and she will inform you. I thank God for her having the wherewithal to, to have this information and want to bring it to the church. Amen. I thank God for that. Amen. So if you have any questions, you can see her, and she will certainly accommodate you with that. Also, we're having an awesome time in Bible study. Join us 10 o'clock a.m. and also 6.30, and also at noon for our uh, manna at midday session. Also, if you cannot attend those sessions, but we're having an awesome, awesome time in Bible study. Come out and study the word of the Lord together. At the end of the worship today, all men are asked to meet with Dick and Chris Jeter, there in the senior classroom there at the top of the hall. And also, parents and graduates. If you're graduating, you've graduated uh, this year, parents, please meet with Sister Jalen Montgomery in room 104. And while I'm on that, let's give a big salute and shout out to all of our 2022 graduates. <laughs> Amen, somebody. Come on, y'all. Amen. We are anticipating Graduates Day, of course, on fourth Sunday, and we're going to be featured by one of our own, who also graduated this year, Dr. Brittany Chambers, going to be our guest speaker that day. <laughs> Amen. Homegrown. Amen. A product of this church, who has gone on to not only achieve great things in her life, but also in the way of academics, and we're so proud of her as well we are to all of our graduates. Amen. Amen, Amen somebody. Amen. Praise the Lord. Aren't you glad you didn't quit? Yes. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Nothing like that feeling. So again, be praying for all of them, but also this afternoon. So please meet with them, parents of all graduates, meet with them in room 104. Also, out in the vestibule area, there is a sign-up for the concealed weapons class. Today is the last day that you can sign up for this class. We will have the information regarding the class on next Sunday. So again, if you desire to sign up for that class, it is there in the vestibule. And also for the VBS, we're gonna be combining with the Washington Church there. So if you are interested in teaching or helping aiding in VBS, with Washington Church, the also the sign-up list is there, also in the best of you. Please do that on your way out on today. Amen. So please make sure that you do that. Also, um, okay, there's also a tote.
again, remember we mentioned on last Sunday, this month we're going to be, of course, uh, blessing uh, families with babies. So again, the, uh, the donations there, the, the, the material there, the boxes rather, are there in the front vestibule. So again, begin to bring those things this month. We made mention of it on last Sunday. We're going to be a blessing throughout the month. Blessing simple parents with, with babies. Amen. We'll be doing that. So please see that or see uh, Sister Tasha and she'll give you information uh, regarding that. Amen. Yesterday, unfortunately, uh, there were some doors that were left open on yesterday. I'm asking choir members, uh, those leaders there with the choir, please ensure, please ensure that if you come out here, everybody comes through one door. Amen. And make sure that those doors are locked when you leave. Amen, somebody. Please make sure that you do that. Because we had several doors that were unlocked on yesterday. And bless God, uh, there was nobody in the church. Amen. When we showed up this moment. I can't hear nobody. Amen, somebody. It's all of our responsibility to make sure that the church is secure. So at the end of rehearsal, please make sure, or whenever you come out, please make sure that the church is relocked before leaving. Amen. Open oh, pray that you did get your... Uh, monthly calendar. It was there in your ministry guide. So again, uh, this month's theme, of course, is recommitment. You may mention that on last Sunday as we go forward now into the, the second half, the backside of 2022. We want to recommit ourselves to the service to God in way of our work, in way of our witness, in way of our worship. That is what we're going to do. So again, read your devotional calendar for the month. Ushers, you may allow them on the outside to enter. Amen. Praise God. Look at her as she walks up. Sister Dicey, God bless you. Good to see you. Amen. That was so cute. She had surgery last week. Amen. And come walking in church on Sunday morning. You tell me God ain't good. Amen, somebody. Amen. Sister Evelina, good to see you as well. God bless you. Glad to have you back in worship. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Continue to be praying for those, of course, that are still sick and dealing with various maladies. Also, Brother Brown, God bless you. Good to see you, man. Amen. 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 We pray for his family. Utilized his mother on this past Friday. He asked to be praying for his sister, who was, of course, caretaking for her mother. Uh, be praying for her brother Ty as well, others, of course. Mother Labor, where are you? I saw you this morning. How is your grandson? It's still serious. Okay. Still serious. Okay. Do you mind if I share? Mind if I share? Okay. Her grandson was involved in the incident that happened at Ingalls on Memorial Day. And he is in the hospital. He has had several procedures and he needs our prayers. Amen, somebody. Yes, ma'am. Ma'am. It's Jamari's dad. Okay, okay. Yes. So remember this baby. But I, but I, I don't care how bad it looks. God can do anything. God can do anything. There's nothing too hard for him. And Kamari, I want you to know, baby, that you're surrounded by miracles. Oh yeah. You're surrounded by miracles. God allows us to go through things and come out of things for times just like this. So I tell you what you do, Kamari, what you do, you keep the word of God in your mouth. Amen. And you speak your father's healing. Amen. You believe God for it. Because there's nothing too hard for him. We say it at the end of every worship experience. Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly. I wish I had some folk in here do what I was talking about. And abundantly above all 
that we may ask of him. There's nothing too hard for him. So I would ask that you be praying for him and this baby and his family. Amen. And we rebuke that what the devil is trying to do in that baby's mind. We rebuke it. Amen, somebody. Praise God. Just remember that family as well. And many others. All I can say by those that are watching me and us here, a gun doesn't solve nothing. Amen. Gun doesn't solve anything. Guns were never, never intended for to be offensive. Amen, somebody. Amen. It's even a shame that we've got to even have folks sign up for a concealed weapons factor at the times in which we live. And be praying for our politicians who are more concerned about lining their pockets than helping the lives of people. Gun reform should have been passed. It's amazing how other countries can pass gun reform and it saves them, but we too greedy to do it here in America. Amen. So y'all ain't got to say amen, but I know I'm right right now. Amen, somebody. Praise the Lord. That's at the time that we live in. Let me pray. Be praying, be praying. If my people are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray. And seek my face and turn from their wicked way. Then will I hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin. I will heal the land. For God says, it was time for the saints. Amen. Be on one accord and be praying for those in our country and those in our county and our community. Amen. That we will do the right thing. Put the guns down. Amen, somebody. Praise God. We're not going to go into our service of communion. So if you prepare yourself, if you did not and you want to celebrate our Lord in the service of communion and you did not receive it, please raise your hand and the deaconess will serve you. Someone did not receive there. If you did not receive, wave your hand. Raise your hand. Somebody will call. Tell us it's going to be all right. Amen. How do I know? Because the blood still works. Oh, I'm glad that when I'm troubled, I have the blood. When I'm tried, I have the blood. Even when I feel like giving up, I have the blood. When I'm in my sin, I have the blood. Amen. Hallelujah. This is the first time that we will do this. Beginning the backside of 2020. God has allowed us five previous months to share this. But today is more significant because of where we are in history. The season with which we're living in. To be reminded of the covenant that Jesus made with his disciples. He says, Lord, I will always be with you. You're never by yourself. You're never alone. And as often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. It is more than just something that we do out of routine or regularity or even for religious purposes. No, we do this because of relationship. But scripture teaches us, he that eateth and drinketh of this table of worldly doeth damnation to their own soul. We're not here to judge you. You're called to examine yourself. 
you know where you are in relationship with God and also with man. And scripture says if there's an ought between you and someone else, you come to the altar, you remember that that ought is not right, you go back, go find your brother or sister and be reconciled with them and then come back and offer your gift. If your heart is not right with God and man, you ought not even have this in your hand. Because this is not a container with some juice and a wafer. This is the body and blood. We got Jesus in our hand. That's how serious this is. And it's so serious, Paul said, because you have this taken it for granted, there are some weak, some sick, and even some have died because they didn't take this serious. So I pray that as we prepare to take in the body and blood of Jesus, that you will be reminded of the covenant agreement, the responsibility that we have as Christians, and that is to live daily for him. God, we thank you for this awesome privilege that you've given to us again. This is a sacred time of worship because you instituted this some 2,000 years ago. When you look through the eyes of your disciples, Knowing that this was the last time. You said this is my body which is being broken for you. This is my blood which is being shed for you. And we thank you. For the sacrifice. The suffering. Even the momentary separation. But you did it for our salvation. Now Lord as we prepare. To do the same. I pray that you will consecrate us. Consecrate this vessel wherein it shall go into. And in doing so, we'll be one with you. It is in your name that we pray. Let your heart say amen. amen. Please stand with me. On that special night, Jesus took bread in his hand. After breaking it, he blessed it. He said, this is my body, which has been broken for you. Eat ye all of it. Likewise, that same night, he took the cup of blessing in his hand. He said, this is my blood, which is being shed for you. Without the shedding of blood, there would not be any remission for sin. Drink ye all of it. God, we praise you, we love you, and we give you glory. Thank you for the precious gift of salvation. Thank you for the ongoing process of sanctification. And God, we can shout because of the expected form of glorification. It all comes through a relationship with you. And so now, God, as we have taken in your body and blood into our body and bloodstream, let us now rejoice, celebrate the life that we have and the life that is to come. We love you and we bless you and we give your name glory. It is in your name we pray. Let the redeemer of the Lord say amen. amen. Come on, clap your hands and give God praise and glory. Keep those hands clapping. It's giving time. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. I'm so glad I'm saved. Amen. 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 I'm glad I'm saved. Hallelujah. Again, today's first Sunday, Building Fund Sunday. Again, if you are visiting with us and you have a church home, of course, that you are affiliated with, of course, your tithe belongs to that ministry. If you are not belong, do not belong to a local assembly, you can pay your tithe to this ministry. Again, because the tithe does not belong to the church, it belongs to God. And we want you to be blessed. Amen. But of course, all of our members, we have asked, of course, that you give by way of the building fund. We thank you so much for all that you have done and what you continue to do. 
We will be having our annual uh, church conference on next month. Amen. So again, we'll be, you'll be seeing, of course, how God has continued to bless us here at the church. But again, we've got so much that we need to do. And so by way of our giving, that's how we're going to do it. But again, we're still in Am I Doing My Part campaign. So we're asking that you will continue, ma'am and sirs, to continue to keep giving to the Lord's purpose. Amen. The giving litany is there in your ministry guide, also there on the screen. Let us read, amen, the word of God. Praise the Lord. It's tithing and giving time. Read. Let us give thanks to the Lord with all our being and come down to the other right. Let us honor God for the blessing and goodness we have received. The Lord loveth a cheerful giver. Each of you must give as you have made up your mind, not reluctantly or under compulsion. Do good and share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. Read. Let's read all together. With thankfulness, we give in gratitude and joy. With prayerfulness, we give in sacrifices and love. With hopefulness, we give in commitment to God. How many of y'all received that for yourself? Amen. Come on. And our trustee ministers, you'll come quickly. Amen. As we shall give our gifts unto the Lord. Amen. Praise God. If you have your seed, lift that toward the Lord. And if you don't have it, you're going to give us all right. Raise your hand with an open hand because God can put something in your hand. God, we thank you for this awesome moment. We waited all week to do it. Now, God, help us to have the right attitude. We just read it. You love a cheerful giver. It's in our attitude where our blessings will flow. And Lord, as we give today, as we sow, we're believing God for great harvest. Not just in our lives, but in the life of our neighbor, in the life of our church. So Lord, we thank you for what you are doing, what you have done, and what you continue to do. Bless those who wanted to give but just didn't have. We're believing God that this month you will begin to turn their situation around. We give you praise, we give you honor, and we give you glory. It is in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. I'm going to ask the two outside out, will you please stand? Those on the outside out, will you please call the rest of the usher, please? Amen.
get a pack of fish and they do so at this time if you catch it. You care to give sacrifice. Amen. God bless you. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. God bless your heart. Come on, let's give God praise for sowing. Come on, choir. Come on and bless us good.
today, St. John chapter 15, St. John chapter 15, thank you choir again for blessing us, amen, St. John chapter 15 verse 16, are you there? And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Come to me with me to 1 Corinthians chapter number 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Note the word abide. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16 and 17. Let me know when you've got that. Amen. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God, where does he dwell? In you. In you. Come with me to Ephesians chapter number 5. Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter number 5. 
Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18. And be not drunk with wine wherein excess, but be ye filled with the Spirit. This is God's word for the people of God. You may take your seats. With your prayers, it's under the aid of the Holy Spirit. For the moments that we have together, I want to share this subject where God dwells on earth. Where God dwells on earth. <coughs> One of the saddest lives that an individual can live is a life with no power. Well, well, well. It's just like trying to heat your home or light your home or even clean your home with no power. It's impossible. To live a life without the power of the Holy Spirit would be the same, Reverend Wilson, as a man who buys a new car, parks it in his driveway, washes it, waxes it, shows it off for everybody to see, even sits in it, but pushes it everywhere he goes because he doesn't know how to start it. <laughs> Sounds foolish, doesn't it? But that's the same with trying to live a life apart from the Holy Spirit. Jesus was instructing his disciples, Reverend Goddard, that you cannot effectively live this life apart from me. He says in John 15, he says, apart from me, ye can do nothing. And so Jesus in the upper room before going to Calvary instructed his disciples, he says, and I will pray to the Father that I will send you another comforter. For those who argue that there's no such thing as the Trinity, there is your validation right there. Because here's the Son praying to the Father that he would send the Holy Ghost. The word comforter there comes from the Greek word parakletos, which means, uh, para means alongside, the preposition para, alongside, kaleo, where we get kalitas, means to call. So the word comforter means one who has been called to walk alongside. He walks with us. He talks with us. He never leaves us alone. And Jesus says, I'm going to pray to the Father that he will send another, alas in the Greek, meaning one just like me. I'm going to pray that God will send this to every believer to be a helper, an aid, and an assistant. And he was telling them that, listen, this is more than just you receiving this precious gift, but you're receiving it to have a deeper knowledge of gospel truth. You're also receiving this gift to give them divine strength and to enable them to undergo trials and persecutions on behalf of the divine kingdom. And I like what the Apostle Paul, who is writing to the mega church there in Ephesus, he's writing to these fledgling believers, he's telling them to be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be ye filled with the Spirit. Why did Paul make mention to the drinking of wine? Well, you know that in those days, because of the lack of purification processes, Wine was used instead of drinking water. But here it is. He knows that there are false teachers in the region. And false teachers would oftentimes use wine and the intoxicating purposes of wine to have them to go into spiritual stupors. But Paul says, no, you don't need that kind of wine. 
You don't need to be intoxicated on that kind. What you need to do is to be filled with the Spirit. Now notice the word filled because we're going to come back to that. He said be filled with the Spirit. And why was Paul making mention to these saints and why is he making it mention to us the importance of being filled with the Spirit? Well, because the Christian life, saints, is difficult to live. Amen. I thought I would get at least two or three more witnesses right there. It's, it's hard being a Christian. Let me talk to my left side. It's hard being a Christian. It's hard being a Christian. Especially when you are in a hellish, heinous, hateful world. It's hard being saved. And I don't know about you, but there are sometimes, I know y'all don't have this problem, but there's sometimes I don't feel saved. I wish I had two or three more witnesses right there. <laughs> And sometimes I just don't feel it. I know that you're so spiritual that you got on your answer and saying, hello, I'm too blessed to be stressed. I, I, I know that you got on there, oh, I'm blessed and highly favored when somebody walks through the wall and child, how you doing? God, I'm just blessed. Well, baby, I don't always feel like that. There are some days I want to cuss. Oh, I wish I had a witness. God, why y'all looking so saved in the building? There, there, there's some days I want to slap people. I want to lay hands on. I mean, I, I don't even lay hands. I don't even throw hands on some folks. I lay hands. I need some real saints in here. There's some days I struggle with my thoughts. Because my thoughts are not always holy. I'm saved and sanctified, but I'm not ashamed. Hey, I struggle with this thing. Know the word. Yes, study the word, but sometimes I don't want to do what the word says. And I'm not ashamed to tell you that sometimes my flesh wins. I need about two or three more witnesses right there. That's why you ought to be praising God and going crazy over mercy and grace. I wish you just tell three folk, wait, three folk on them. It's hard being a Christian. When you got to deal with cantankerous, mean, nasty people who all they want to do is talk about you and run you down and try to assassinate your character and you got to love them anyway, then sometimes you would say, go to yeah. Lucius on uh, what was that show Lucius was on? Empire. I know he was talking about it's hard out here being a pimp. Well, it's hard out here being a Christian. Can I tell this? Can I just tell the truth? It's hard because we face uncertainties. Hopelessness rips our hearts and we face trials and sometimes tears. Amen. Flow. And oftentimes we are confronted with challenges that are bigger than us. And there are some times we feel like Marvin Gaye makes you want to holler and throw up both my hands. It's like a jungle sometimes. It makes me wonder how I keep from going on. Amen, somebody. Because there are times in our life it feels like the word is not working. There's financial stress, domestic issues, and even sometimes the church becomes a battleground. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you come to find peace in the house, and sometimes there's no peace. And sometimes we're left asking, is there any relief? Paul said, be not drunk with wine. We're in excess, but be ye filled with the Spirit. And Jesus said, I'm going to pray to the Father. That he will send you another comforter. Amen. And then I have to remind myself that when I'm dealing with these struggles, that what? No, ye not that your body is the temple Amen. of the Holy Ghost. Amen. I've got to be reminded that you got God in you. And wherever you go, you take God with you. Amen. And Paul says here the reason why you got to be sealed with the Spirit because the days in verse 16 are evil. 
This is why, beloved, we cannot be living under any other influence of things in this world, such as alcohol or other worldly intoxicants that can impair your judgment and cause debauchery. Am I in here by myself? This is why the Bible teaches us to be filled by the Spirit. And this is a command and not an option. If you are saved in the building, it means that you got to every day be filled with the power of God. Now, this is not some supernatural zap in your life. It's not some esoteric experience of suddenly being energized and being ushered into a new level of divine spirituality. And I know that because of the charismatic and Pentecostal movements, we've got several misconceptions about receiving of the Holy Spirit. And those will argue with people that say, if you don't speak in tongues, you don't have the Holy Spirit. Listen, tongues don't mean that you got the Spirit. Because listen, you can speak in tongues, but may not speak to your neighbor. That don't mean you got the Holy Ghost. People say, if you don't lay on hands, you don't have the Holy Spirit. Well, baby, there are those who got the power to lay on hands, but won't give nobody a helping hand. That's not evidence of the Spirit. These are gifts, not requirements. I wish I had a witness here. Gifts, not requirements. I'm glad the Bible plainly says, no matter what gift you have, 1 Corinthians chapter 13 says, if you don't have love, you're nothing but a tingling brass and sound music. I wish I had a witness here. Because the Spirit indwells every believer at conversion. Let's go to Romans chapter number 8. Romans 8. Romans 8. Am I doing all right so far? Good, good word. Romans 8. Thank God that on those weak days, W-E-A-K days. Oh, anybody ever had a weak day? Thank God on those weak days, we have the power of the Holy Spirit. To help us and aid us. Amen. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 8 verse 9. The, the Holy Spirit indwells us at conversion. Uh -huh. The moment you give your heart to Jesus Christ. Amen. God moves in. Amen. The Bible says. But ye are not of the flesh. Not in the flesh. But where? In the spirit. In the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. That's sanctification. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Y'all got a little chilly right there. If, if God does not is not working in your life, you don't belong to him. I wish I had somebody. Because in order for God to move in, something got to move out. Amen. You cannot hoard both the world and spirit in the same temple. That's right. That's right. In order to be filled, you first got to become empty. That's right. That's right. I wish I had a witness here. You got to rid yourself of everything that the world has put in there. I can't have the world's drum beats. I can't have the world's dress. I can't have the world's directives. I can't have the world's dialect. Huh. Jesus. Amen. I've got to have all of that taken away so that God can begin to fill me. And once God fills me, now I begin to operate under the kingdom agenda. Amen. Talk back to me, somebody. Amen. So again, he comes to dwell inside of all of us. That's why Jesus said in John chapter 7, verse 38 and 39, he says, if you're thirsty, come and drink of me. And when you get me, you'll never thirst again. Amen. Do I have a witness here? Amen. So again, we got evidence according to the spirit of God. That we have the indwelling of the spirit. You take him everywhere you go. Because this is where God dwells here on earth. And then he gives us the requirement. He says, be ye filled with the spirit. How do I become spirit filled? Well, you first got to be saved. Amen. I didn't say come to church. I said be saved. You have to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. I didn't say be religious. I said you got to know Jesus. Matter of fact, help me preach that along through here. Ask three people on your road. Do you know who Jesus is? Come on, ask him. Do you know him? But here's the question. Ask your neighbor, does, does he know you? Because it's not enough that you know him. He got to know you. I wish I had a witness. 
Amen. Go to Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13. Good word, Pastor. Yes. On it. A lot of folks say, I know the Lord. Well, I'm putting my baby. Does he know you? Amen. Amen. I wonder sometimes if God had a DNA test. <laughs> Would we really be in the family? <laughs> Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13. This is this he said, be ye filled with the Spirit. Here it is. This is how you become saved. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13. The Bible says, in whom he also trusted. Here it is. After you heard the word of truth. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, when you have heard the gospel, the gospel is the good news. Amen. The gospel is simple as this. Jesus lived, he died, he rose, and he's coming back. Amen. That is the gospel. Amen. You don't have to go to seminary to know that. Amen. That's all it is. Jesus is the central figure of the Bible. But when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also that ye believe. So once you hear the gospel and you are convicted of your sins, the Holy Spirit that's been wooing you because, again, you were made for him. And when you acknowledge the fact that I need a savior, now I believe. And your belief comes through your faith. You now believe in Jesus Christ. You believe that God, he is God, the son of God, and then you believe he died for your sins and he was raised on the third day. Scripture says now you're ushered into the family, the fold, and the fellowship of Jesus Christ. Isn't that wonderful? You now believe. But when you are a believer, now what God do, he brands you. Huh. He brands you. You are now sealed. Y'all see that? With the Holy Spirit of promise. The word sealed means to set a seal upon. It means to prove one's testimony to a person that he is what he professes to be. Now you are sealed. That means God put his mark on you. My God, you have his spirit inside of you that now sanctifies you. The word sanctifies means to be set apart. You are now useful for now God to use. Are y'all with me here? So again, you are no longer of yourself. You now belong to God. He has placed his mark on you. And so now Paul says when you are filled, when you become Say you become a part of the family. He says now the filling of the spirit. The filling comes from the Greek word paleo, which means to make full, fill up, to fill to the top, or to fill to the brim. The verb is in the imperative mood. Again, it is a command, which means you and I must be continuously filled every day. It's a mandate. You can't go off what happened yesterday. Amen. Can't go off what happened Friday. Because those days are gone. you got to be filled every single day because of the possibility of living in rebellion toward God. Amen. It is amazing how quick you can fall into sin. Amen. Why are y'all so quiet? Amen. Yeah, you can fall into sin just as fast as you breathe it in and out. Amen. Yes, you can. Amen. One missed thought can get you into sin. Yeah. Do I have a witness here? Yeah. Yeah. But when you are filled with the Spirit, you realize that, listen, I know within my own flesh, that's why you can't be out of touch with yourself. Amen. You still got to remember, yes, I'm Spirit-filled. Yes, I'm a child of God. Yes, my name is on the road. Yes, I'm on the way to heaven. But I can't lose touch of who I really am. I wish I had a witness because Jesus said in John 14, 15, if you love me, keep my commandments. In John 15, 10, scripture says, if you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love. Even I have kept my father's commandments and abide 
in his love. 1 John chapter 5 verse 3. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments and that his commandments are not grievous. This means in your life every day, you got to daily submit yourself and be obedient to what God has said in his word. Amen. And as you daily submit yourself by crucifying your flesh and also submitting and obeying the Lord, now you begin the process of filling. But then secondly, there's got to be an insatiable desire. I like it because Paul does give some type of, of comparison to a person that drinks, to a person that drinks alcoholic beverage. Uh, one of my vices was I used to love to get my drink on. <laughs> Thank you for being a witness. Because <laughs> the rest of y'all act like y'all ain't. I mean, I had a desire for it. I mean, for real, for real. There were times, and that's all I thought about all day long, was getting a drink. Amen. 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 And I wasn't the only one. Amen. Some of y'all minds just went back right quick. Come on, we back in church. Had an insatiable desire. But it was something about that desire was you would do whatever it took to get that drink. And you wasn't satisfied. Thank you. Help me preach this. Until you got it. Well, come here. That same desire you had for that, you ought to have for the filling of the Holy Ghost. Nothing ought to get in the way of happy hour. And can I tell you, happy hour is just not on a Tuesday at 5 o'clock. Every time you read your Bible, that's happy hour. Every time you think about the goodness of God, that's happy hour. See, beloved, when you have an insatiable desire for God, you got to have a daily confession of sins and surrender to his will, his intellect, everything about you got to surrender. And you got to have a daily dying of self that I must decrease so he can increase. Am I making sense in this little sermon today? You see, I, when you have that desire, and my wonder, my question today, does anybody in the room have a desire for the things of God? Or is your desire more of the things that can satisfy your flesh? Mm. Amen, somebody. We get quiet on sermons like this. But you ought to have a desire to be filled with the Spirit of God. And then secondly, if you're going to be filled with the Spirit, there's got to be an immediate denouncing of carnal living. Amen. Romans 8 and 8 said, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Amen. If you denounce carnal living, there's some things you got to get rid of. Come to Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. Amen, somebody. Verse 19. I don't get many amens on these sermons. You just got through singing, moving down in my soul. I feel it moving. But now you sit there. You quiet. Because you convicted the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Amen, somebody. Amen. There's got to be a denouncing of carnal living. No, look, look what you got to get rid of. Verse 19. Now the works of the flesh manifest, which of these, here it is, adultery, fornication. Uncleanliness, right. lasciviousness, which also is sexual sin, mm -hmm. idolatry, witchcraft. Don't think that witch is only seen on Halloween. Mm -hmm. There's some people that operate in the spirit of witchcraft, mm -hmm. demonic, 
hatred, variance, emulation, wrath, strife, sedition, heresy, envying. Y'all don't know about that's jealous of one another, do you? Murders, drunkenness, revelings. People just fight all the time. And such like of the which I tell you before, as I have told you in times past, that they which do such things shall not, help me read it, y'all, shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So verse 24 says, and they that are Christ have crucified the flesh. I can't crucify my flesh. You can't crucify your flesh apart from the Holy Spirit. Because he helps us. So again, they crucify the flesh with the affections and lusts. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Is that what your Bible says? Because God will not inhabit a filthy temple, nor will he reside in a double-minded life. I wish I had somebody. No, because when we live in open sin, we do what the Bible says not to do. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 19, the Bible says, quench not the spirit. And basically, we put the fire out. We put out the fire of the Holy Spirit, helping us to move and do the things that God will require. In Ephesians chapter 4, 30, the Bible says, and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed under the day of redemption. Can I tell you, the flesh is the weakest part of us, for the flesh wants to gratify itself. This is why being filled daily is paramount for the believer. And can I tell you, when we crucify our flesh, not only will we have a desire, not only will we dismiss carnal desires, but thirdly, we'll have an intimate delight. Oh, hallelujah. In order for us to experience this delight, we have to live so close to Jesus and be consciously aware of his divine presence and let his mind, his mind, infiltrate our thoughts. His heartbeat becomes our heartbeat. His emotions become ours. His word become ours. Colossians chapter 3, verse 16 says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. Teaching and admonishing one another in psalms, hymns, spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts of the Lord. The word permeate, we want God to permeate our thoughts. The word permeate means to spread throughout. Oh, when somebody is cooking some barbecue, especially ribs or brisket, they heavily season the food. But they just don't season the food. They rub them seasoning all over that meat. And sometimes they'll even inject seasoning into the meat. What they're doing, they're trying to tenderize that meat. They're trying to season that meat so that that bland meat will taste better. Can I tell you that's the same thing God wants to do in our lives? God just doesn't want the spirit to be outside of us. He wants the Spirit to be inside of us. Where there is inspiration, revelation, application, confirmation, and then transformation. And this will bring forth a good delight. Can I tell you, child of God, a life without the Spirit is just like this shoe. This shoe is made for a purpose. It looks good, it's pretty. But it's just a shoe. It's no good. But if you put a foot in it, you put a foot in it, it makes a difference. This shoe can't go nowhere until the foot gets in it. Then when the foot gets in it, it begins to control. And now the foot, now the shoe, is doing what it was made for. I wish I had a witness. There are some folk trying to live their life like this shoe. There's nothing on the inside. And even though you look good, 
you're not living up to your purpose. No, no. But then even worse, there's some folk like this old basketball. Yeah, yeah they come to church. They, they're basketball. But you can't do much with it. Because if you try to use it, it it'll bounce a little bit, but it, 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 it ain't going nowhere. You part of the ministry, but you 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 you, you, you come into Sunday school, you, you got your Bible on your phone and on your arm, but not serving your purpose. I, I, I mean, you, you're a basketball, <laughs> and, 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 and you look good, but that, that's all that's going to be gotten out of you. But you're happy coming to church, but your life is just you glad to be married, but just you wonder why your marriage getting cold is because why why, why isn't my family coming together? Why why isn't this happening? Why isn't that happening? I tell you what, you got just enough spirit in you to make you look like a basketball, but you ain't going nowhere. But I tell you what. If you learn to get the Holy Ghost in you, you see how bland this looks. You see how nasty this looks. But if you get the Holy Ghost in you, he'll change how you look. And when you get the Holy Ghost, when you get filled with the Spirit, now you just won't, when you bounce it, it just won't lay flat. Now, it'll come back up to you. Now you begin to operate. Y'all ain't saying that I come to preach today. When you get the Holy Ghost inside of you, now you can go somewhere. But here's the shout, Deacon Tuck. No matter how hard you bounce it, you'll go higher. I wish I had a witness here. When you get the Spirit, they may talk about you, but you keep on going higher. They may laugh at you. You might get a sickness in you. Somebody may walk out of your life. I wish I had somebody. Will you give somebody a high five and just tell them if you get the Holy Ghost in you, now you begin to walk in your purpose. I don't care what the devil does to you. You'll keep on bouncing. You'll bounce right up and you'll come right back. You'll bounce right up and you'll come right back. You'll change how you look. Tell your neighbor, I've been through some stuff, but I got some bounce back ability. I've had some tough times in my life, but I bounce right on back. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Give somebody one more high five and tell them if you get spirit. God will change your appearance. Okay. Tell somebody else, until you get the Holy Ghost, you won't walk in your purpose. And, uh, huh, I got to go, Ty. I got to leave. Come on in. Here it is. Paul says, if you want to be effective. Well, you got to have the power of the Holy Ghost. Because without the filling of the Holy Ghost, your life is just going to be this. Do I have a witness here? But I've made up my mind. I don't want my life just to be this. I want my life to be this. I want to go high. Is there anybody in this house who know that you want to go higher? Y'all help me close this little sermon. Now. Go on and slap somebody. Now. A high five in this building. And tell them today. I want my life to go high. And Paul says here, if you get filled with the Holy Ghost, the Spirit will manifest itself there in everyday living. Because Paul says here, 
there. If you get the Holy Ghost working there in your life, it'll change your worship. Tell somebody, it'll change your worship. Because I heard Paul say it like this. You'll talk to yourself in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. You'll sing and make melody there in your heart. In other words, you'll keep on going higher. Just not in your worship, but also in your words. Because when you're going through, you will give thanks always for all things under God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, you will go higher. Shake somebody's hand and tell them the deed. God will. He'll change your vocabulary. Instead of complaining, you'll learn to celebrate. Instead of cussing somebody out, you will learn to bless them. Instead of pouting, you'll be give God a praise. Turn and tell somebody, God will change your language. And is there anybody in here know that to be the truth? You wanted to say one thing, but the Holy Ghost changed your mind. The Holy Ghost changed your heart. But not only will He transform your worship and transform your words, He'll help your wedding relationships. He'll change your marriage. Is there anybody in here that knows that you've been married a mighty long time, but you made up in your mind? We're going to allow the Holy Ghost to help us in our marriage. And so now, you and your husband, you're going higher. Your house is going higher. Y'all ain't saying that. Tell somebody you'll change your wife. You'll change your husband. But he just won't change there in your house. He'll change your work. Every time you show up there on the job, you will begin to go up. So let them talk about you. Let them go ahead on and threaten you. Let them look crazy at you. I tell you what you do, you keep on going higher. Slap somebody else a high five in the building and tell them you will go higher. But the last thing I got to tell you, and I'm out of here today, he just won't change. He just won't change your words. He just won't change your worship. He just won't change your marriage. And he just won't change your work. But this is what I like. He'll change your warfare. Because I heard him say, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Tell somebody else, in spite of the devil, when you get spirit filled, you ain't worried about what the devil will do. God will give you power. Turn and tell somebody, God will give you power. Power to handle your hate. Power to overcome your hurt. Power to deal with your hate. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Let them come on and hunt you. You got the Holy Ghost. And in spite of what they say, I'm going to keep on going higher. Is there anybody in this house today, on this Pentecostal Sunday, know that I'm going higher? Turn and tell somebody, I'm going higher. I need every preacher to look at everybody here and tell Macedonia, we going higher. I need every deacon to turn and tell the congregation, we going higher. I need every deaconess, every minister's wife. I need every usher. I need every mother. I need every father. I need every member to turn and tell another member, we going Because of the Holy Ghost. Is there anybody here? No, you got it. Is there anybody here? No, you got the Holy Ghost. You want to turn and tell somebody? I got the Holy Ghost. He's in my mind. He's in my mouth. He's all over me. Every time I think about what the Lord has done for me, I can't help myself. Give somebody one more high five and tell your neighbor I'm guilty of having the I can't 
can't help this. I can't help myself. Every time I think about where he brought me from. Every time I think about where he's taking me to. Every time I think about how he saved me. How he raised me. How he picked me up.
be satisfied with this. That's too low. When you hang with buzzers, you get what buzzers eat. God don't want you to be a buzzer. God wants you to be an eagle. He wants you to fly. But the only way you can fly, you got to be filled. I wish I had a witness here. Turn and tell your neighbor. The only way you can fly, you got to be filled. Filled with what? The Holy Ghost. Somebody say the Holy Ghost. Everybody stand in the camp stand. It's not enough just to say you in church and come to church every Sunday. The devil don't care about that. You're not a threat if you're a church goer. But you are a threat if you get filled. I wish I had a with You get filled with the Holy Ghost. Now you are threat. If you want to go higher, it's not going to come by how much money you give. How many churches you join. We got folks that's going from church to church to church trying to find something. Get somewhere and sit down. Sit under leadership, under teaching. And learn to apply it. I'm just not getting fed. No, the problem ain't you ain't getting fed. You just ain't eating. Do you want to go higher? You got to have the right thing on the inside. I love it because when you get the spirit filled, you'll change your appearance. You'll go from looking dingy to being brand new. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, I wish I had some Bible readers here. But if you satisfied just looking like this, that's your business. But you're going to miss out on so many blessings and save things that God wants for you. God's got great things in store for you. But if it's all you keep sowing to, it's all you're going to get. But if you want to stay like this, don't hinder somebody who want to go higher. Yeah. Don't get jealous of them. Don't trip with them. No, join in with them. Because if you don't want to go higher, that's your business. That's okay. But I choose. Damn. And, and here's the beautiful thing. Sometimes you lose some air. Sometimes you start feeling a little flat. Here's the thing. God will fill you right back up. Right back. When you go to him, I need a witness here. That know there have been some times you've been flat. But you went back to it. And what did he do? He filled you right back up again. This is the way God wants you to be. And the only way you can be this way, you got to know him. You got to know him for yourself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I pray that you enjoyed this little sermon today. Amen. Amen. There may be somebody here. Your life is like this. Your marriage is like this. Your family is like this. And you're tired of being like this. You're tired. If that's you, you can raise your hand wherever you are. And somebody will come. And they'll pray with you. Or maybe you, you're just as pretty as you can be. But you have no purpose. Because there's nothing on the inside. It's not about being pretty no more, saints. It's about being powerful. Amen. But when God gets on the inside like a foot in this shoe, He controls it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He'll take you places 
that folk thought you'd never go to. He'll take the levels that you never thought you would have scaled to. Do I have a witness here? This is the way God wants us to be. He wants us to be effective. That's what God wants. So if you're not saved today, I wouldn't leave this church without saying, God saved my life. And when God saves your life, he'll fill you with his precious Holy Spirit. And what we have to do is cultivate that, manifest that. Keep feeding the Spirit, not the flesh. And, and feeding the Spirit will cause you to be useful in the kingdom of God. Is that you? Is that your family? Is that somebody here? Come on. Come on. Come on. If that's you, I wouldn't leave. I wouldn't leave. Because I'm telling you, one day, you're going to see Jesus Christ for yourself. Come on, come on. Somebody stand with this baby. Come on. Come on. Somebody stand with this baby. Stand with this baby and this mother. Hey, man. Come on. I would not. I would not leave this place without requesting. God, fill me. Take out the world. I don't want the world anymore. I want more of you. If I get more of you, you'll take me higher. Oh, he'll help you when you're hurting. God has a way of trying those tears. He has a way of reminding you of the promise that he set forth over your life. He has a way of doing that through the Spirit. He said, I'll never leave you, nor will I forsake you. Come on, will there be one? Will there be somebody else? Come on. Come on. Come on. Be real with yourself. Come on. I'm not where I need to be. I've been yielding more to my flesh. I've been sowing to my flesh. And the Bible says if you sow to your flesh, you're going to be corrupt. But God gave us the Spirit of God. And if we sow to Him, He'll lead us as God is in righteousness. The Holy Spirit is going to judge righteousness. He's going to reprove the world of sin. Amen, somebody. And he's going to guide in truth. That's what He comes to do. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Hey Amen. We're still making room for you. Come on. We're making room. Come on. You got to lead your family. You can't lead your family walking by way of the world. You got to walk by the Spirit. Come on. Come on. Come on. I'm not where I need to be. But here's the, here's the shout. All you got to do is just confess and repent. Amen. Repent means to turn. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. In order for God to bless you, you got to break you first. And the Holy Spirit will break you and bless you. He wants to use you. So right now, God, we thank you for the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. But Lord, we've learned that we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. You dwell in us here on earth. And Lord, help us to live our life according to the scripture. God, give us an insatiable desire for the things of the spirit and not of the things of this world. You've called us out of darkness to walk in the marvelous light. So God, help us to be filled with your spirit that we may become useful in the things of God. Oh God, we don't want to live a flat life. We want to live a faithful life. And we can only do that when we're filled with the Spirit. So Lord, help us every day to crucify our flesh that we may walk therein in the Spirit of God. There may be somebody here struggling and wrestling because they know I'm going to have to leave the people that I love I'm going to have to break some habits that have made me comfortable. But God, if they make that decision, you'll grant them such a peace that the world will never understand. 
Oh God, let them know you got something far better, far greater. If they just follow you. And God, I pray now for this baby that's come. She's standing on behalf of her father. God, you already know the situation. You're already there, so we don't have to ask you to go. But God, we're believing you right now for a miracle. Because we know that you're a miracle working God. God, ease her troubled mind. Ease her troubled heart. Let her God declare and decree the word of God over her father's life and her life as well. Bless her mother. Continue God to bless Mother Labor. Bless the family. Let them speak peace. I lose peace in this situation. Oh God. You already know the outcome. So God, we trust you. And we believe in you. And we know that all things shall be well. Because you are a healer and you are a deliverer. But more importantly, you are a sustainer. God, we thank you. And for these others that come around the altar for whatever reason, God, we pray that you just not heard their prayer, but you'll answer according to your will. Allow them, God, to walk by way of the Spirit, testifying of you every single day with their lives. We love you. And we thank you. Help us to go higher. We don't want to stay on the same level. We're not satisfied to stay on the same level. We want to go higher with you. So God, let us be filled with the Spirit of God. We thank you. And we love you. It is in your name we pray. Let your heart say amen. Amen. Now come on, put your hands together and give God praise. Come on, take it in, it's all right now, it's all right. membership today. Missionary Baptist Church. Sister Pamela Brown is interim church clerk, and yours truly is pastor. Normally, we would do the right hand of fellowship, but I'm going to ask that you all would just extend that as you greet them as they leave. They just get point your hand at them, point both hands at them. 
and just tell them, we're so glad to have you. Welcome home. Now come on, put your hands together. Come on, come on, y'all. Hallelujah. Please remain standing where you are. Amen. They have already been working in the church. We just wanted to make it official today. I thank God for each one of you. And we are so glad to have you. And we thank you. Amen. You can return to the seat. Amen. We get ready to go home. Amen. Turn and tell that person beside you, I love you. And you can't do nothing about it. Tell them, say, neighbor, I don't care what you may face on this week. Just live in the spirit. Because you have a God who is able to do exceedingly and abundant above all that you may ask or think according to the power that's at work in you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, we thank you for what you continually do here in our midst every day and we have learned that you dwell inside of us. And you dwell in us here on earth. So every day, let us be filled with the Spirit. We have entered into this place to worship. Now as we leave, give us the spirit of servanthood. Now may the grace of God, sweet communion of his Holy Spirit, may he rest, rule and abide. Now henceforth and for the Lord. Let us all sing the threefold our men together. Everybody together. God bless you. Everybody. Everybody together. Come on. Thank you for the spirit that lives inside of us. Thank you, Jesus. Everybody. Amen.